Hola, you are listening to First Gen Healing, a podcast on Latinx healing and awakening journeys. My name is Priscila Luna, and I am so excited for today's episode. You guys are going to see it's a little bit different today. And I thought that I would bring on someone that's special to me. I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, hola. My name is Esther Esther Estrada. I'm really happy to be here with Priscila. It's, it's been a long time coming, so I'm really glad to be in this space with you. Well, I think we could even just start off by saying how we met. I started posting on TikTok. I think it was spring of last year. And do you remember when you found me? On, Honestly, on I feel like it was one of your first videos. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, wow. yeah. I've been following you ever since you started. You you were a little nervous when it first began, but I've seen your growth and it's been amazing being part of that journey. I remember when I started to notice your page, you were also posting like art that, well, your art that is um, kind of like uh, awakening in a sense art, I would say. Or how would you describe it? I don't know. <laughs> In the beginning, it was a process of self-love. Um, when I first started off uh, creating art, I would draw other people, people that I would consider attractive, people that, um, you know, were your conventional, like, standard of beauty, European usually. Um, mm. And I never, I never considered myself to be part of that space or, you know, conventionally attractive. Um, so when I first started posting, it was more of trying to see myself in a different light. I, I wasn't even able to draw myself when I first started off. I didn't know what I looked like. So you, yeah. you see the, the different space that I've been taking things in. Um, but yeah. I'm trying to move a little bit more away from that. So I feel like I, I had the opportunity to integrate self-love. And now I feel like I'm... I'm trying to move towards something more expressive one that i remember is like you stepping into this very colorful like you're stepping into a portal kind of and um then there's also the one that you drew which is amazing of the earth and like this being kind of like um drawing it and so when i ran across your page i was like oh i want to connect with her <laughs> then i think i messaged you and i was like hey would you like to meet virtually and so since then we have kind of had communication which has been really cool because we're on different paths but definitely both on healing and awakening journeys I would say um, and it's been super cool to be in communication with you and I think we're reflectors to each other we reflect back what we see and that's been really cool because it can be easy to empower others and like you know tell others que le eche ganas and, and give them their flowers but sometimes it's really hard to do that for ourselves and I think we've kind of done it for each other in different moments, which has been really nice. And it, it's one of the reasons why I love your channel from the very start. It, every step of the way, it's like you've had something to say um, as far as like your podcast episodes or even the messages that you share day to day. They reflect and teach me something that I feel like sometimes I miss the lesson and they're like, you know what? We're sending Priscilla. She's not getting it. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Yeah, it's so cool. When I, um, well, well, we'll get into today's topic. Today we're talking about astrology and we're talking specifically about Saturn returns. And I think that this is all super aligned because when I got like my Saturn return reading, one of the things that the lady said was, you have to tune into your own energy and what's going on in your own world and reflect that back to your audience and they're going to resonate she said you're gonna find your people the people that need to hear those messages and i think like coming from corporate world not much that's intuitive very processed like you know followed by the book oriented to then think oh I need to tune into myself and whatever I have going on is going to be relevant to someone out there in the internet, you know, you saying that is like, that's the proof there, you know, like that people will resonate with the messages that I, whether you, I can call them like downloads or things that are like very present for me that may be present for others. So super cool that that actually is true. She was right. <laughs> and I, I, much to, I don't know if it's uh, something that you welcome, but I have been keeping you updated. I'm like, hey, I just listened to this podcast. This is what's going on in my life. Thank you so much for uploading it. 
yeah yeah no of course i welcome yes i love it <laughs> yes if you guys ever resonate with an episode and want to talk about it please feel free to message me that's what keeps me going you know there is that need for maybe a little bit like reassurance you know because um it's all super super new for me so so yeah and I'm we're, we're able welcome. to start a conversation we're able to go ahead and see that we're not the only ones going through this so it's it's been impactful and seriously guys interact give her some feedback let's start that conversation Please. yeah yes 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 yeah i mean i think ultimately the goal is community um and so that's where i'm headed you know like there's different things that i'm putting out there to like start that momentum but definitely i look forward to the time where it does feel that way you know because i think that in these journeys like that's super super needed and so maybe we can start to get into what your relationship with astrology is if there's any you know like is it something that you just hear about you're like hmm, that's interesting has there ever been like someone that brings you closer to that what's your um kind of trajectory with it the reason that i started taking it seriously is because of the moon so like your last name it's almost like it was meant to be right um <laughs> the moon has such an effect on the waves and it can cause so much either destruction or just beauty and we're made of i'm not sure what that what the percentage of water is that um makes us be who we are 70. but if it has that much 70? 70. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think so. And if it has that much effect on water, what is it doing to us? Um, and I know that there's been a couple of like stories where um, ER doctors say that things get really weird whenever there's like a full moon. So I started trying to yeah. get into, you know, astrology and seeing what it is. Because uh, for the most part, we just focus on our sun sign. But mm -hmm. there's so much nuance and there's so much depth that goes into it it's not just you know oh well i'm a leo and and that's it everybody has yeah. like their their own charts their own systems mm -hmm. and if something as far away as the moon can have that much impact imagine everything else yeah Ooh, yes i think that you know we're gonna get into that actually we're gonna talk a little bit about what's beyond like your sun sign and by the way i'm not like an astrologist yet nah. <laughs> but definitely have taken interest in it my uh maybe history with astrology or like how i came into it was through an uncle of mine who i give credit to probably what i'm doing now to be honest um when i first started to awaken he was there for me um at that time my parents had divorced my dad moved out of the state and I wasn't talking to him for like two years. And so he, I think like one, he had read my chart and he knew that like these years were going to be difficult for me. And I didn't know that, but I knew like then I found out that he knew. And so he started calling me out of nowhere. He lived in Venezuela and he was like, ¿Cómo estás, hija? like, I just want to know, you know, how you've been doing. And I think I being like a super independent first gen at first it takes me a really long time to open up but I think he knew like he, that I would need him in those moments and so he would keep calling me and checking in and then I finally opened up about awakening and he was super understanding and knowing of what I was going through and that was so cool because awakening for me wasn't just like oh I realized that I have uh, triggers and that I need to change you know this cycle it was so beyond that for me it was like holy crap I'm a human on a rock and we're floating like what is this all about um what is society why do we have all of these rules like I feel like I was really seeing through what people call the veil you know of like all of these conditionings I kind of like pierced through it you know <laughs> and uh, it was really hard for me to vocalize it, but it's super nice to have like someone to catch me in that and kind of be like, you're 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 not crazy. You know, you're you're going through something called an awakening. And so his way of maybe walking me through it was through astrology. So he had my chart and like he read my like birth chart and he explained to me, you know, what these years were. And he explained to me um 
kind of like my strengths and weaknesses and all of these things, right? And so through astrology and awakening, we connected and that was actually his career. He was an astrologer professionally. And so he would read charts. Yeah, in Venezuela, he would read charts for like politicians and like um, YouTubers. There's this famous YouTuber from Venezuela that he used to, he said he was like his client of his. And so that was his thing. That was what he did. Um, And he actually within that year like you know passed on i think like knowledge to me and then he passed away that year which is so so crazy to me that the timing of it all he was young it wasn't something that like we expected but it was a health issue that happened and since then like he really planted that seed of curiosity in me and so um i've kept up with like i've found like my go-to astrologers and people that i listen to and tune into and 28 to 30 was my saturn return and so that's kind of why i wanted to talk about it because i know i think it's 70 percent of my audience is between the ages of 25 and 35 so either We're you're right about in that to cusp, go through it, yes. yeah, <laughs> you're going through it, or you just went through it. So for you, your Saturn return is in Pisces. Pisces, correct? yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. and mine is in Aquarius. So I just kind of like my generation just finished, yeah. And then, so let's talk about that. Um, what is a Saturn return? A Saturn return happens between the ages of twenty-seven and thirty. And basically, when we are born, we have like the planets are, and um, celestial bodies all are at a certain area in space when we're born. And so your chart, like your birth chart, is kind of like a snapshot of that based on astrology, right? And so um, Saturn, for example, was in Aquarius when I was born and it was in Pisces when you were born. And unlike the moon that has a cycle of 24 hours or Earth 365 days, um, the Saturn cycle is of 27 to 30 years. So it, it doesn't come back to the same sign until 27 to 30 years. And it actually will take another 27 to 30 to come back again. So usually people experience two, maximum three in their lifetime. So basically... That's more like the actual factual thing, Um, but the life kind of event is it's a review period, essentially, Um, a period of time that may bring things that you have learned to this or thought you learned to the surface, things that may be cycles you think you maybe have closed may resurface, whether it's relationship, career wise, self-esteem, confidence, They all have different themes and the themes vary depending on um, the sign that it's in and then the house that it's in. It's essentially a review and an opportunity, kind of like a fork in the road, to choose am I going to live the next 30 years out in a similar path or am I going to do the work to pivot and completely change the trajectory of the next 30 years. It's kind of like a really big cycle that we close or we continue and then have an opportunity to close in 30 years again. How does that sound knowing that you're about to start or you're starting it? <laughs> um, it, it sounds validating um, because I, I honestly, I saw a lot of these messages even before I knew what the heck was going on. Um, mm-hmm. And I, it, it kept on coming up and it was the same reoccurring messages. When your video came up and uh, you started talking about, hey, let's talk about this. I'm like, okay, I'm right in that cusp. That means that it's probably for me and there's probably a message that I'm not paying attention to. So I started looking into it and yes, it, it's been hitting me in the head quite a, quite a bit this year. Mm, yeah. Ooh. Okay. Well, let's talk about um, maybe the houses and the signs, and then we can get more into yours, because I pulled up her chart. You guys can maybe um, look up your chart and, like, walk with us so you understand a little bit more, because definitely astrology goes beyond sun, ascendant. I think people even think they're, like, beginner if they just know their sun, and they're like, oh, I'm intermediate if I know my ascendant and my moon, but it can get so much deeper than that. 
So if you guys are looking at a chart, and I'll put an example of one in the video version of the, of the episode. If you're looking at a chart, there is like a pizza. There's 12 slices on this pizza. And every chart will have 12. The order of the houses always remains the same. So it starts off, um, if you're looking at a pizza, like the bottom half, it starts off as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12. Okay. So that remains the same. That's kind of like the structure or the, yeah, the, the foundation of a chart, right? And then based on when you were born, not only the date and year, but also the time and place, um, then we have how the signs are going to fit into your chart. So your ascendant is the horizontal line on the left side. You're going to see the sign of your ascendant. And then you're going to see different signs on the edges of each of the houses. And so uh, that's what's going to define like the theme of that house for you. So what are houses? Houses represent, they house, let's say, a different theme in your life. So for example, the first house, it's called the house of individuality. So um, yourself, your esteem, your self-esteem, your appearance, um, awareness of self, etc. And then the second house is the house of values. So like money, what you value in life. Everyone has those houses. We all have the same themes, but the themes change based on the sign that um, rules that house based on when we were born. So for example, my ascendant is Capricorn. And so if this is the house and it stays the same, but the signs are the ones that change, Capricorn, if it was like a wheel, we turn it to Capricorn. And so then all of the other signs kind of follow suit. Um, and then like if your ascendant, which I think yours was, is it Taurus? I have a little cheat sheet. Okay. If you guys want a very inexpensive chart, you can download the app called Time Passages and it's 99 cents. So your ascendant is... Libra? Yes, Ascendant in Libra. And then that dictates the rest of your chart, right? So like then your first house is in Libra, your second house is in, second house is in Scorpio, and so on and so forth. And so if we want to look at what the Saturn return for her is, her Saturn is in Pisces and it's in the fifth house. And we said the fifth house is the house of will. And... Then Pisces as a sign. Let's see. Yeah, I think I know way less than I thought I knew. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're learning Pisces. as we go. Yeah, we're learning as we go. I thought I was so confident in like explaining stuff, but I think, I don't know. Honestly. Well, from what you've been telling me, everything has been aligning. Um, it looks like I have Pisces uh, on my sudden return and it's in my fifth house. You were talking about how that's the house of will. Um, mm -hmm. so it's, it's been making fun so far, especially with the lessons that I've been having this year. Mm, okay. So do you feel comfortable sharing maybe an example? What's like an example where you feel like that's been tested maybe? Um, well, we were talking about this earlier and one of them has been, um, setting boundaries and not placing myself in the role that people want to see me in. Um, mm. Like I mentioned, I, I was recently told at work, Calladita te miras más bonita. Um, mm. And my automatic reaction uh, was to silence myself and uh, to see it as, okay, well, they're trying to look out for me. They're try always justifying what the person's intentions are rather mm -hmm. than how it's making uh, me portray myself or how I'm showing up um, and whether or not that's constructive or destructive not only for myself but for the community around me in that moment what was like i think you said your reaction was to silence yourself so in that moment you kind of took it as is and just stood quiet um I, i'm a daca recipient um i was born in mexico and this is something that i've always been told not to talk about um, um so i i understood the space where she was coming from she was trying to go ahead and give me advice um because it is a difficult topic and not everybody is open to it. Um, not everybody has good intentions uh, in regards to it. 
So I, I saw where she was coming from and I saw the the fear that she had because of the, her own personal experiences. And although I do sympathize with that, um, I believe that the best way to show up is to talk about it, to humanize the mm-hmm. people behind what's happening, behind all of the, the political jargon. We're people. And mm-hmm. the only way that people are able to see how it's affecting us is to put a face to that specific aspect. Mm -hmm. Um, But again, instead of voicing this, I wanted to protect her feelings and I I shut down. That's so beautifully said, the way, like it's about personalizing the experience rather than also being a part of what silences it, right? I think that's so important. And that's such a beautiful even like thing to stand behind, I think. And it's so interesting how... Like for you, it's tied to the DACA experience and for others, it may be tied to other things, right? Where it's kind of like hide this part of you. It's not it's not good for you to show this part of you. It's not good for you to show and shine. And I think that's part of what the Saturn return does. It's it like confronts you in ways, in different ways to maybe something, whether it's like you've maybe already been thinking about this is how I want to go about it here's the opportunity, right? Like you get that opportunity. Now, I think an important thing from what I've learned in my Saturn return is to not get down on yourself if at chance number one, you don't succeed in the way you should, you thought you should, you know? If you Because we're talking about it now, right? (laughs) Exactly, yeah. And to not like get beat yourself up about it. It doesn't mean that you failed the lesson. It doesn't mean that you didn't learn or that, oh, like, I'm still, I don't know, I, I, I've ran across a lot of people who don't feel confident, right? So, like, I just lack the confidence and, like, I couldn't speak my truth. And, and they let that really mean something about them. But what's really cool is you can take it as, cool, now I know exactly what I want to say the next time I run across this, right? No, and um, usually for me, I've, I've been told a lot that I come off as very assertive um, and that I don't have a filter, but I don't, I don't like to beat around the bush. So when I have something to say, I usually say it the, however it comes out. Um, and in that moment, I knew that her intentions were good. I just, I, I'm learning how to find that balance in what I want to mm-hmm. say, but also the delivery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And learning to pick your battles, right? Like, when is it worth it to speak your truth? I think, um, as first gens like i think this moment let's say the saturn return if you're going through it it really te desequilibra a little bit you know like because you're kind of glitching a little bit where it's kind of like maybe one day you say your truth but you say it too loud or too start like too direct right and another day you don't say it at all and so it's kind of like you're you're really coming into your own voice kind of like a baby lion you're starting to roar um and so it might sometimes come out con un gallo you know like eh, <laughs> no va a salir exactly how you wanted it or other times you you just can't get it out um but it's just remembering like this is actually the moment where you get to recalibrate and like decide or attune to your own voice attune to your own truth and like start to acclimate to when it is that you it's worth speaking it when it's not and even then learning to i think hold yourself despite what happens right so if you said it too loud and then something went wrong understanding that you got you you know like that you instead of being your first critiquer like the the that little negative voice be your first cheerleader you know like it's okay we got this we'll we'll do it better next time uh we'll deal with whatever comes of it what about the spirituality side of it because it says here spirituality and boundaries what has kind of surfaced for you? Um, well, the fact that we're here talking about astrology. Um, I grew up in a very religious household, incredibly conservative. Um, wearing makeup, dyeing your hair it was considered a sin. I mean, mm. wearing jeans was considered a sin. So uh, now being open and openly speaking about astrology, which back then they considered you very demonic, um, I, I often have to sort of pull back on a lot of what I want to say. 
um, mm-hmm. because of you know the, the fact that my family is still incredibly conservative. Um, they're still you know subscribing to that platform, which mm-hmm. again I, I see where they're coming from and them wanting to protect. Um, but it's also staying true to what I believe in and um, being open to things instead of living in fear. Um, Mm -hmm. And a lot of this has been coming up more and more, uh, whether I need to maintain my usual practice of meditation or if it's honestly just speaking to the people within those communities where they're like, oh, well, maybe you need to come back. Maybe you strayed too Mm -hmm. far. Maybe you're into these things and they're, you know, they're brainwashing you into thinking that this is okay when it's not. And it's um, sort of getting getting rid of the old indoctrination and and the way I saw it um, was more of like living inside of a cult or being raised inside of a cult because you're not allowed to interact with people outside of it. You're not allowed to question things because then you're questioning God. So Mm -hmm. uh, right now in the spaces that I'm in, I have been finding myself a lot within, um, you know, pastors and priests and people that are incredibly, you know, religious. And they're doing a Mm -hmm. lot of really great work. Their heart is in the right place. Um, But whenever it is that they're they're talking to me about how I've strayed so far, it it does bring in a little bit of that fear. And I have Mm. to sort of check myself and ground myself and come back into the reality. Yeah. You said it's kind of like a cult. I think society is kind of in the cult (laughs) as a whole, right? (laughs) Like, I think that... I mean, speaking in awakening terms and like seeing through the veil, I think there's so many layers of cult, you know, like kind of like conditioning, essentially, where we are if we stray away from, then we are considered something other than normal. And it's so easy to fall outside of that when you're going through this path, I think. Um, But secondly, you know, you're mentioning family and a religious background. And I think that like there's this rebellious part of me. Maybe you resonate like there's this rebellious part of me that's kind of like that sees right through that and is like, okay with stepping outside of those bounds. But at the same time, I do understand that this like religion or belief or whatever it is that they kind of are devoted to has gotten them through really hard times. Like it has, it really has come through for them, you know, in moments of need, dire need. And so I do see like the value in that for them. And I will say at first when I started to maybe the last couple of years, I have been a little bit less tied to that and more tied to like my rebellious side. Like kind of like I don't necessarily mind if I'm offending you or if I'm disrespecting the way that you see this certain like god or story etc because i was like in the pursuit of my own exploration of spirituality uh but right now i do like you know now living back home with my mom and kind of re-entering these spaces had i been them maybe i really am hurting something that got them through some tough times you know and and life gets real like real real sometimes and you do need to kind of hold on to something and if that was what got them through that I'm like that's really important to them you know and here I was kind of seeing the duality and everything yeah Yeah. it's hard not to especially whenever you feel like you're like as though they're attacking your personal belief system or your character but um realizing that their intentions um again it it comes back to the delivery of the message their intentions might be good but the delivery is not always the best um yeah but one of the things that my tia always says to me is um el respeto al derecho ajeno es la paz i know some Mm. someone in mexico has that quote i i might be not quoting the person correctly but this is what i remember my tia telling me um, and she's been very instrumental in learning how to listen to what they're saying, understand where they're coming from, but also giving myself and them the respect and the boundaries that we need. You don't need to understand mm-hmm. them. You, they, they still need love. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think that takes a lot of inner work, right? Being able to listen to someone, sit in the same room, maybe even... Um, and like be able to 
not adopt it or have to agree to it to then be in good terms with that person you know it takes that inner work to be able to sit through a conversation that makes you uncomfy uh and, and sometimes yet even be able to, yeah yeah and triggering yeah Ooh, i i think it happened with one of my really close friends where we were kind of both trying to figure out kind of mid-20s going through like who are we what do we believe in and she took a very like religious path like she kind of like sat tomas a la religion and on my end i was on the <laughs> like very silly like oh my god we're on a floating rock oh my god isn't it weird that we live in a, a skin suit like <laughs> <laughs> that we have a brain and that, you know, we're not actually, you know, I see como that out there, you know, really questioning everything. And it was so hard. I remember in that time because any conversation felt like, like yes. questioning. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard so, uh, for me. It was with my sisters because I have two younger sisters and they, they chose the more uh, religious aspect. And again, I completely understand where they're coming from, but at the same time, um, standing my ground and standing in what i believe in it, it's finding that balance it gets tricky mm -hmm. yeah it does get tricky it's like the connection points have to shift you know if before we could connect in this way maybe now we connect in this way you know kind of like really shifting like what relationships even mean in this moment what's been interesting for me and like in the saturn return aspect Um, for me, it was actually very related to self-expression and authenticity. And so essentially, you know, talking about the houses, like for me, it was in my first house, which is kind of individuation and individuality. Um, and when I got my reading, essentially, I was explaining to the astrologer, I just feel like in my upbringing, there was so many rules and I didn't nurture my self-expression. I was the responsible child, which meant I took on a persona that wasn't me and I didn't get to really like stretch out of that you know I allowed myself to live within the box of this is who you should be and you have to be an example for your younger sister and I really took that to heart and it didn't bother me to be honest for a very long time until my late 20s when I went through my son's return and I started to realize that through my career I had mirrored my home environment So if in my home environment, I followed rules and I stuck to them and I didn't really like uh, it's kind of like what what does it mean to stretch stretch out of that? For example, berrinches for small things or like being irresponsible for once, you know, like I was always attuning to what would be the responsible thing to do in this situation. That's what I was doing. Right. And I wasn't really stepping outside of those boundaries that were set for me. And then I mirrored that without realizing by the career that I chose. I chose human resources, which HR upholds the rules of the house, right? Like we uphold the rules of the business. We are a standard. Like if I ever went to happy hour, I was never getting really drunk. I was never having all the fun because I felt like I represented human resources in all in every aspect so social media you know if coworkers wanted to follow me i was like oh like i can't be me and then try and me. yes like then write you up for something because what if you say oh but i saw you doing this you know or whatever like it's it's so crazy to me how without realizing it i like created a maybe slightly bigger box but another box to live in you know and so the theme of my saturn return was breaking those boxes apart and being like, who the heck are you, girl? Like, if we take away all the rules, right? And for me, it was like, if you leave your career, if you're, if you step outside of the role that you play in your family, like, who are you? Who, who wants to express through you? What are you here? To, who are you here to be without all of this stuff? And that rocked my world upside down because it was like, I had never like removed so many of the things and allowed myself to explore without those boundaries you know and i honestly the fact that you were able to go ahead and set that boundary is very commendable because a lot of, personally i know that i usually get stuck in that people pleasing um and it, it's been a lot about that of like trying to shift out of it and, and setting up those boundaries and enforcing um kind of like that 
mutual respect, but still, you know, um, showing up the way that you need to show up. As you were mentioning, authenticity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's tough. I think that, uh, you know, and that's kind of why I want to devote like the next couple of years for me to, to help others do that is because now going through that process myself, I realize it requires so much more than like stepping outside boundary boundaries in the sense of dressing weird. I think like when people think of authenticity, it might be like your style, right? Or like kind of that's how what I would find when it came to authenticity. But for first gens, it means so much more. It means letting that persona go and fall through the cracks and being okay with that. And I think a lot that of us so burn difficult. out. Yes, we're willing to burn out in the pursuit of keeping that image up for everyone, right? Like, oh, I'm used to being the helpful person. So if they need my help, I'm going to go help them. Well, like you're willing to go help them and not help yourself because you'd rather hold up their, the vision that they have of you than show up for yourself. That's OK. I'll let myself go. I won't, you know, have like an hour to myself in the morning. I'd rather get up and go to work because they need me at work more than I need myself. So it's crazy how much we deflect self-care self-love in the name of others and that is what to me now is like authenticity it's like I was even even upholding a rhythm of life that was never mine to begin with and I didn't even know like my parents both work two jobs every single day you know and of course the circumstances are different it was out of necessity it's not like they got to choose the rhythm of their life right um but I realized that in my life the rhythm that I tried to carry mirrored theirs in the sense of, oh, I don't even have time to cook because I'm so busy because, you know, and so I would eat out the way that I ate out my whole life because my parents didn't want like have time to cook. So they would like get us from food from fast food places. So I was mirroring that same thing without the exact same necessity. You know, I was no longer in that need that they were in, yet I mirrored it in whatever way I could you know it was kind of like oh it's because they need me so much at work that I can't even eat lunch and so I order in you know or I like go pick up something in the drive through and it's like whoa I had to really get honest with myself like you're not in that place that they were in you're actually doing fine financially why are you still like in survival mode you know why are you upholding yourself to a level that isn't even yours and I think I thought that was what life was I had to be like that and otherwise something really bad would happen I I feel like um it's been embedded into us that if we're not busy we're not doing anything if we're not being productive we're not upholding the the values that we were like instilled with and um I because I'm also um firstborn and I have my two little sisters so I completely understand that I grew up with my parents both working the the two jobs and whenever I see myself wanting to relax I feel guilty whenever I want to take a break or whenever I feel burnt out and that I want to just do nothing it feels wrong Mm -hmm. yeah and what I think helped me was then you know, I think that's why it's healing and awakening always, because at the same time, I was learning more about my parents and like what they their wounds were. And what I realized was partially like maybe at the beginning of my childhood, it was out of necessity. But now in my adulthood, my parents were working just as much, not out of, so much of out of necessity, but more of survival more of trauma response you know like because in a similar way when they rested they would think and they didn't want to think and they don't want to like remember you know and so when I started to dismantle what this was all about now I was really seeing like oh this rhythm that I'm trying to uphold is set by two individuals who have experienced a lot of trauma and don't want to face that don't want to remember it don't want to like unpack it and so that's why they have maintained that same rhythm of life and I'm burning out trying to maintain that rhythm of life is that really what I want to do like then it no longer is a standard that has to be met but it's more like now I know the truth like in a way now I've dismantled it to the point where I understand it's a trauma response so it no longer made me feel like a bad person 
you know, and no longer mean it, it. I started to realize it's not that I'm lazy. It's that they, they have their reasons for not wanting to rest. You know, they have their reasons for not wanting to stop. And I don't have those same reasons. You know, I'm kind of like willing. I know I don't, I didn't go through the same trauma. So maybe for me, it's a little bit easier to rest and like fight the guilt, you know, or like, or confront the guilt. What is this guilt really about? You know? And I think like really facing that little by little has allowed me to change the rhythm of my life. And I've now I, I'm so thankful that I've come to the place where I can tell my mom, like, I'm sorry. I just, I, I put it in a good light. I just don't have the energy you have, you know, I'm just not like you. You're go, go, go. And I need today to rest. It's things that sometimes they're not willing to look at. And I think at first I was trying to get them to see it too. Like, Hey, here's what I've learned. This is a trauma response. And this is how, you know, but I realized they're not there. They don't want to be there. And so then I had to continue to see through it, but also just kind of continue on my own path, you know, and re recognize I still sometimes throw in like, you should go to therapy, <laughs> but I don't, you know, it's no longer like my goal to get them on the same path as me because I recognize we're on different paths. And um, I feel like that's what this whole Saturn return has been about. It has been about seeing where we've been, the things that we've learned and whether or not we're going to go ahead and continue in these patterns. If we're going to go ahead and show up, stand up and break these generational curses or if we're going to go ahead and continue the same patterns that we've been learning. And it's, it's yeah. definitely a challenge and we've been we're, we're getting called out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like we're given the awareness, right? And so then, like, what do we choose to do with that awareness? Ooh. <laughs> it's not easy stuff, you guys. And it can really throw you off for a little bit. So it's kind of like reestablishing your your new foundation for the next 30 years. Oof. I, it's definitely a challenge, guys. Um, and if honestly, if you guys feel like you need help navigating through all of this, I know Priscilla is an excellent coach definitely hit her up because she has some amazing insight and I, I know that this has been a learning process but it feels like she's miles ahead she's always just like one step ahead of it and she's like oh I know exactly mm. what to do yeah <laughs> thank you yeah I am so excited to step back into the shoes of coaching and yes thank you for the plug I'm excited I am leaving options for coaching now in the description and i'm also working on a couple of experiences let's say that really relate i think to everything that i that i've learned from first gens through the podcast through coaching and also through my own experience of course aligned with becoming your authentic self learning to prioritize yourself set boundaries and show up for yourself that's the very first piece which is like being willing to show up for yourself then getting out of your own way and establishing like boundaries and uh, routines and mindful practices and then figuring out who you are outside of all that stuff, right? Like really mm. stepping into it. And I love the way you said it, uh, getting out of your own way. Because <laughs> that, that comes <laughs> up a lot. Yeah. What do you, like for you, what has your experience been on that? Um, honestly, the self-limiting beliefs um imposter syndrome being in spaces that are very uh white dominated um mm. and trying to tell myself you know what i have just as much a right to be here i have the knowledge i have the the drive the will and trying not to silence myself and once again trying to a lot of the times we feel like we're not prepared enough. And no matter how much preparation we do, how much research we do, we still feel like it's not enough. So it's, mm. it's getting out of your own way and telling yourself, you know what, mm -hmm. you were invited and you're here for her reason. They might be seeing something yeah. that you're not seeing in yourself. And it's, again, getting out of your own way. Yeah. Those limiting beliefs can really stem from previous experiences or even just assumptions of how an experience will go um, but just hearing you talk about that reminded me back to like when I was occupying those spaces and how exhausting that experience can be, it, it, especially if it's top of mind constantly for you, it can get so tiring, right? Like just 
<sighs> yeah, it's reminding me of like the anxiety I used to feel or also like the again, rebalancing like what's worth speaking up about and what's not because in these spaces you run across comments that are like slightly off, slightly disrespectful, slightly, you know, like uh racist and you're kind of like, mm, like is it my place? Is it the time to speak up on that? Usually you're trying to occupy those spaces. So you think like if I speak up, I might no longer be invited to them. Right. So it's really such a difficult balance to manage that and still stand in your truth. Kind of. No, I, I've been in spaces where uh, my background comes up into play and I, I do mention that I was born in Mexico. So I've had people literally tell <laughs> uh, they come up and tell me, oh, well, your English is really good. I you I can't even hear an accent. Like oh, yeah. you sort of backpedal a little bit, and you're like, "Wait, was that wow. was that just a microaggression here in corporate?" And mm-hmm. again, you're you're in that space where you're like, "Should I speak up? What's gonna happen if I speak up? Who do I talk to about these spaces?" And I I ended up um, speaking to my HR about it, and she's like, "Well, you should have called her out in the spot when it happened." Um, so it, it was putting it back on me and um, it, it's always weird trying to navigate these things mm-hmm. yeah and I don't think there's like a right or wrong like answer each situation is so different and each of like I think again it's kind of like a rebalance right like you learn you learn what your balance is and you test it sometimes and hope for the best too like it's tough it's tough to to be there um Uh, Because until you live it, I think it's hard to imagine it, too. It could be easy to be like, just ignore it. But the reality is, like, part of becoming authentic is reclaiming who you are and your roots and where you come from. And so it's hard to do both, right? Like, to really hold that and, and then at the same time, like, step into these places and just ignore. It's not as as easy as that. My parents, for example, I remember coming back to them and mentioning, like, and it made me so mad and they'd be like they've experienced so much of it unfortunately that they're just like just let it slide off just let it slide off Tú echale ganas, trabaja, you know, y sube. And, and i know it's like it sucks because yeah they have faced it so so much that like that's what got them through the day you know but then us you know like being like okay is that the right thing to do or not because it, then it it, may, it empowers like, them to continue the same cycle. Exactly. Yeah, it gives them like green light. Oh, okay, this is okay, you know. So I, what a difficult balance that is. Yeah, because we we're always taught to keep our head down, work hard, and that's how you get noticed. But in a lot of these spaces, that's that's not the case. If you keep your head down and work hard, that's how you continue to get exploited. Ooh. Girl, that's a whole episode of its own. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yes, 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 yes. Well, to wrap up the episode, I was thinking, we know, I think Saturn returns can be really hard, but they can also give you like a moment to reflect and then also dream a little bit, you know, like it is a moment to re some, I think this is what happened to me. I think when I was very young, I had this really big vision for myself of like, this is what's going to be my life. Then life got lifey, you know, and it, I shrunk that vision to reality and what's realistic. And then it like got really small and the Saturn return, like turned my world upside down to the point where I got to dream again, you know, unexpectedly. So maybe we can end off with what are some positives or what are some like glimmers as now I've seen them called that we've been seeing through this journey that have maybe reignited love for certain things or um, reignited our dreams or what what we think is possible for us in the future? Um, Personally, I have been very grateful for the fact that um, I put it out into the universe that I, I wanted to be surrounded by people that were working towards positive change, people that actually wanted to help people because in the spaces that I was in, Everybody was out for themselves. Everybody was uh, ready to go ahead and and find the next best way to become rich. And um, Mm. I'm in in the space now where 
profit isn't everything. It's about taking care of one another. It's about service to others because service to others is service to self. And um, being given this opportunity to redefine what success means to me and where it is that I want to go ahead and, and focus my my energy into, whether it's monetary or if it's going to be more in the lines of something that's spiritual, something that's fulfilling and something that's going to have a positive impact. Yeah. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah. I think it's, I'm very aligned to what you're, what you're explaining. I think it was a similar transition where it was like, universe, I want my income to have a heartbeat. Like, how do I make that happen? And the path there, you know, was a lot of what we've talked about. I think at some point I was so tired of the trans, like the the day to day of corporate life that I shrunk my vision of my future where I was like, maybe I don't need that much money. Maybe I don't need a house. I just started to like shrink it to the level of my output cannot be as great as it's being required to like move into the next promotion where I just started to shrink the level of life that I thought could be possible for me. And then I that spark came in where I was like, what if my my income has a heartbeat where it's like aligned and it makes sense and it doesn't only serve me, but it serves others and I can still have a good life, a nice life. And I feel like it started to open up the world for me again, as opposed to let me just shrink to the level of output that I think is possible. I realized, no, like if I find something that I'm passionate about, that I love, that helps others, then I it doesn't feel as daunting or as self-sacrificing or a soul sucking right (laughs) Uh, suffocating and so thankfully like I think that's been like the glimmer for me too where it's like finding people that are doing good things and that tie their income to their purpose you know and that has been so beautiful and I'm glad to have been a part of all of it and seeing your growth it's been amazing it's it's I've been loving seeing your strengths show up your voice show up and honestly having the opportunity to be here with you and have these conversations. Thank you for for the invite. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. You're super important to my journey and I'm glad that I got to like share this space with you. We were just looking for the right time. So this has been a perfect time and it's been so beautiful to see your journey unfold too. Part of giving voice to my journey is then seeing that reflected through other people right like that that others are going through something similar that it is unfolding in a positive way um sometimes through coaching we get to some points where people feel a bit like helpless in a way like maybe they they get to a point where they do feel the um the walls come down and it feels like they're having a hard time finding the positive and in those moments, I've asked people, like, ask the universe, ask, like, ask to see the way, ask to see, like, the next stepping stone. And what's been really cool is that it actually comes through for them. Like, they actually do see the next stepping stone. And I think that that happened with you. I think that, like, you started to see the pathway out, you know, or a kind of, like, the next even, like, glimmer. And it's been super cool how exponentially that has happened and unfolded for you. And you've been a tremendous help in that. Thank you so much for being here with me as well in every step of the way. I really appreciate the way that you've been showing up, the way that you've been voicing every single step of the way that of the things that you've been going through, even though they haven't been easy. It, you've been a tremendous inspiration. Oh, here, give me a hug. I'm just kidding. <laughs> a virtual <laughs> hug. Come here. <laughs> hey, I'll oh, be in your course. city in, uh, in October. Ooh, okay, cool. Yay. All right, guys. Well, Esther, thank you so, so much for sharing the hard parts. I know like your Saturn return is just starting, but I feel like you have an idea of what it's going to be about and you're already kind of dipping your toe into that experience. So thank you for being open about it. And like I always say, first gen, remember that I love you. I love me and I can't wait for you to love yourself. Bye.